All right, we're going to be in the book of John today, chapter 14. We're going to pick up on verses 15 and read to 18, just about four verses there. Book of John, Gospel of John, <coughs> chapter 14, verses 15 to 18. Most weeks I get it on Facebook. I don't always get it on there, but I think I got it on there this week. Book of John, chapter 14, verses 15 to 18. Look at there, say amen. 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 All right, Jesus speaking here. It says, if you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, and he may abide, and that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. A little while longer, and the world will see me no more. But you will see me. Because I live, you will live also. Now, we're, we know, we're in uh, week five of the sermon series, Faith that is Real. You know, it's one thing to say you have faith, but it's certainly much harder to live it. A lot of people say they have faith. They have faith in many different things in this world. But a lot of the things that you have faith in that this world does, it's going to leave you empty. It's not going to get you where you want to be in the end. But to live it is much harder than it sounds. The word, the word faith is a small word, but it's very hard to follow through. But fortunately for us, once again, God has made a way. Praise the Lord for that. God had knows that what we have difficulties with, and he, and he makes a way for us. You know, sometimes it's going to require something from us, but he makes a way. But there's something many Christians don't like to talk about, what I find in the circles that I go in. Many Christians do not like to talk about the Holy Spirit. You know, the Holy Spirit, you know, you know what it is and you recognize it as a Christian, but it's kind of something that's distant. It, just, it doesn't seem real to you. The Holy Spirit is the most misunderstood part of the Holy Trinity. Because it's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. It's not somehow, you know, it's not something extra tacked on. You know, when you see one, you will see the other. They work in perfect harmony. How many times do you think, see people work in perfect harmony? But the Holy Trinity does. God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit. God the Spirit work in perfect harmony. There's no bickering. There's no, who's number one? You know, many times we worry about, you know, am I going to get the credit? See, it's all about the Father. It's not about anything else. There's no bickering between the, the Holy Trinity. As I understand the Scripture, you can't even be saved without the Holy Spirit drawing you. Now, I know some of you have been saved in here probably longer than I've been born. But do you remember when you got saved, how you felt? You know, it was something different. You know, sometimes, you know... I, you can't get saved. You know what? I think today I'm just going to go to church and I think I'm going to get saved today. It's, it's, that's not really the way it works. The Holy Spirit speaks into our lives. You know, there's something different. I remember when I got saved, I didn't really know what it was. I was greener than grass. I had no church background at all whatsoever, anything but that. But I knew the Holy Spirit was speaking to me, but I didn't really understand it, but I know I liked it. It was something different. You know, when God speaks into your life and you really can feel the Holy Spirit, you know it. There's a big difference. But it seems like many Christians, they, they, they function on some type of uh, limited presence of the Spirit. It's just enough to get them by. Just enough. Just as long as I get through the gates of heaven, I'll be fine. I don't care if I'm a doorkeeper or a street sweeper in heaven. Really? Is that your goal for life? You know, God has so much more for us. I wonder one day, when we arrive on the other side, now I don't know how it's all going to work out and how things are going to transpire, but I do know this. I, just, I wonder, in my mind, maybe I think too much, I wonder if he's also going to show us all the things maybe that we could have accomplished in life if we would have only allowed him to work in our life with his spirit. I wonder how much more that we could have accomplished. I would hate to get to the end of my days, you know, and sit there and think about, you know, well, I, I could have done so much more if I'd have only allowed God to do more in my life and speak into my life more. I don't want to get to those days and feel like that. As a Christian, we cannot function properly without the presence and guidance of the Spirit. There's got to be something happening there. Sometimes people go to church as a ritual. It's a religion to them. I don't want religion. 
I don't want nothing to do with what you say, what you're a pastor. I don't want anything to do with religion. I want something to do with God. And not all religion has anything to do with God. It's, it, it's a tradition. You know what? My grandparents went to church. Well, praise the Lord. They went to church. That's a good thing. I'm not saying anything bad about it. But that's not what I'm looking for. I, I've been, at, you know, when we go on vacation or whatever, very seldom do we miss church. We, we usually visit a church somewhere. May not, maybe we might not even know where it's going to be, but we'll just stop somewhere. And there's many times, as soon as you come there, you can feel the presence of God. But there's other times you don't feel anything. It feels cold. You know what? There's a big difference. It's, it's the Holy Spirit. That's the difference maker. And I truly believe God, uh, God's Holy Spirit, will manifest itself differently in each person. It's going to do differently. You know what? I've had people say, you know what? If you have the Holy Spirit in your life, you'll do this. If you have the Holy Spirit in your life, you'll do that. You don't know that. That kind of, that kind of teaching and that kind, that kind of thinking has to go out the window. Because God, the Holy Spirit is going to manifest itself differently in each person. So to say that I'm going to do this or do that, that's hogwash. That is not Scripture. That is somebody might be teaching that somewhere, but it's not right. It's not Scripture. It's going to manifest himself differently in each person. That's going to look different. What, what, what happens to me and what happens to you could be two totally different things. You know, when we say that God is going to do things this way or could do things that way, we're denying that God made each one of us different. We're denying that God made each one of us unique. You know, I can actually look out here today and, you know, what, and actually see that some of you are unique. You know, I can really see that. Thank you. <laughs> I will talk just about you, Steve. <laughs> yeah. That's your middle name, you need. <laughs> yeah. All right. But, uh, but the thing that can be said about me, I can look into the mirror and see that God made me different and made me unique as well. Each one of us was made differently. He made us unique. That's a good thing. How would you like it if a whole bunch of yous were running around in this world? I don't know about you, but it wouldn't be good from my angle. Not, not for me. I wouldn't want a bunch of me's running around. That wouldn't be a good thing. So we have to remember God does things differently. I wouldn't want about 200 Eddie's running around. That would be, that's not good. That's not good at all. I can't, I can't lock God into moving a certain way. Because God is going to do anything he wants. I don't care what I think he's going to do. He's going to do whatever he wants. Because he is God. And I have to remember where I'm at in that relationship. He's God and I'm not. I need to remember that. When I try to lock God in doing things in a certain way, in essence, if you, in the overview of things, you're trying to say basically is, I got God figured out. So that means, okay, if I have the Holy Spirit and it, it means you're going to do this or you're going to do that, you're going to do that, that's not the case at all. I don't have not have God figured out. If I think I do, I am in danger. I do not have God figured out. He is going to do whatever he so desires. The Holy Spirit. Something that gets left out many times. The Holy Spirit is treated like a weird cousin sometimes. You know what? You know the Holy Spirit is part of the Holy Trinity, but you know what? You can't act like he ain't there. You know, like that weird cousin maybe you got? Maybe you know, there's somebody in your family, you know, kind of kind of off the wall. You know what? You don't really, really want to act like you're related to them, but you are. You might not even speak to them. You might disown them. Hey, but you're still related to them. That's one thing I've noticed in this life. You can pick a lot of things, but you can't pick your family. You're related to them or you ain't. It's one way or the other. You're related to them. You might, you might disown them, but you're related to them or you're in. You know what? That, that, that person, you know what I mean? That, that, that weird cousin. Maybe you're that person in the family. I don't know. You know, I mean, in my family years ago, I think I was the black sheep. And that takes a lot to be the black sheep in my family. But somehow I think I was. Whatever it may be, you know what? God is going to move differently. It is what it is. You know, you know, you uh, you can't disown them, your family members, and you know, as I said, sometimes you don't even speak to your family members. Heaven forbid, dysfunctional family. We don't speak to each other sometimes, but you're still related to them, just as the Holy Spirit is still part of the Holy Trinity. 
and is still part of the Holy Trinity, and we can't deny it. We can't leave him to the side. Now, I'm going to share something with you. It's been a number of years, but it happened to me three or four times. Maybe it, it's been quite a number of years now. Now, as I said, the Holy Spirit manifests itself differently in each person. But my salvation was questioned because I don't speak in tongues. I was ticked off. I was ticked off. How dare these people question my salvation because God doesn't manifest himself in my life the way he does in theirs. I was, I was so bad. Who do you think you are? Just because God doesn't manifest himself, who do you think you are? My salvation was questioned. And I've had people tell me, you know, when they find out I'm a pastor, do you have the Holy Spirit in your church? Of course we do. We think we're atheists out there. <laughs> of course we do. I know what they were getting at. But that is so incompatible. Evidently, I don't know what they're reading. God is going to manifest himself differently just because I don't do a certain gift. Tongues are real. Yes, they are. I'm not, not denying that one bit. But what I'm saying is it's listed among many gifts. Many gifts. It doesn't say you're going to have all of them. You're going to have some of them. You should be manifesting some of those things. But each thing is going to be different for each person. What I find is people that speak in tongues, I don't have a problem with them. they got a problem with me. How dare you question somebody's salvation because God doesn't do the same thing in your life as their, uh, in their life as yours. We think God, if God does it in my life that way, he's going to definitely do it that way. Otherwise, they're not right. You know, God does a lot of different things in a lot of different people's lives. You know what? God can use anybody at any time. You've got to be a willing vessel. How dare you question somebody's salvation? Boy, I was ticked off and I never forgot that. I was so angry about that. I know maybe they meant well, but it didn't come out well at all. And it didn't go well. You know what? I've seen people and you know what? They're out doing things. And I remember one particular situation in the scripture that the disciples saw somebody out ministering in Jesus' name. And the disciples come back to Jesus and they told Jesus, said, we saw this group of guys out here and they're ministering in your name. But guess what? We don't know who they are. Do you want us to go out and stop them? Jesus like, you know what? I'm going to paraphrase here. He's like, no, no, don't. Don't do that. You know what? They, they couldn't understand it just because they didn't understand it and they didn't know them somehow, some way. You know what? They couldn't have been doing right. Obviously, we would have known them. We're the 12 disciples. We're getting full of ourselves there. How dare we think that some, God can't use somebody else and he might use them differently than me. God is going to use each one of us differently. Now, what I, what I saw in life and what I've heard a lot of times is and what I find is Making a decision to live right and to live for God is not always the same thing. I've asked a lot of people at different times, like maybe when it's for a baptism and I'll be talking to them beforehand, or maybe when somebody's getting ready to get married or something like that. And what I hear a lot is, you know, I, kind of, I want them to think a little bit deeper. And I ask them, I said, you know, why are you doing this? What, what makes you want to do it now? Most of the time, a lot of times what I hear is, it's the right thing to do, Pastor. It's the right thing to do. Yes, it's the right thing to do, but I'm trying to get them to look beyond that. Because making a decision to live right and to live for, live for God is not always the same thing. There's a lot of good people out here, but they're not born again. Being led by the Spirit is a game changer. When we say, I can't do it, we have finally come to the realization that only God can I can't do it. I can't do this anymore. I've tried. i put all the effort I can into this situation. I just can't do it anymore. When we come to the end of our rope, you know what? That's where God lives. He was there all the time. Amen. He was there. We had to finally figure it out for ourselves. There's things that we can't accomplish in this like without God. You know, there's a lot of ways that God is going to manifest himself. There's a lot of ways people are going to do things. It might not be your cup of tea, but that's all right. You know, there's two ways you can enter a swimming pool. You can ease in or dive in. You know, I'm a little bit too old to dive in. I don't, I don't think too much of that anymore. You know, I'm kind of the easy one. Ooh, you know, just, just get it over, you know. Boy, this is cold. You know, 
But it, the, the thing about it is, whether you're the person that eases in or dives in, it doesn't really matter. Because you're still going in. That's the important part. You're still going in. The same thing happens spiritually. As long as it happens, you're moving forward. That is the important thing. Many times we think, you know, what the, boy, these people here, they've been saved a long time. They're certainly not moving forward much. Or, or, you know, everybody's growth is different. It's going to happen different. I've seen people get saved and they're like, well, in a year or two's time, like, man, they're just very, very just moving forward or, you know, you know becoming uh, much more mature Christians. But there's people I've seen that saved many years and they're like, like, they're just boom, right there. You know, they've never moved. You know what? You can't uh, judge somebody else on what you think should be. Now, let's be clear. The Holy Spirit is a person. It's not an it or a thing. Not an it or a thing. Your phone is an it. The phone you carry around with you all the time. You can't have a relationship with your phone. Well, then again, maybe you remember some people only so much. There are people on there a lot. Much, they might be having a relationship with you. I'm not sure. They're on there a lot. It makes me wonder sometimes, you know. You know, sometimes my phone rings so much at times, you know, it makes me wonder if I'm having a relationship with it. But did you know that when your phone rings... You can have it call you by whatever name you tell it. You can have it say, you know, like for instance, I can set my phone up and, you know, when it rings, it can, it can say, you know what, um, you have a call, Eddie, or pick the phone up, Eddie. You know, you can have it say whatever it is you want. You can have it call you by your name. Now, it made me, made me think of something. This happened a number of years ago now. Uh, me and a coworker were together. Uh, after that day, I was a passenger in, in the vehicle, and he, they were driving, and... Uh, they were on their phone doing something. They were talking to the phone. It was having the phone look up something or whatever. Well, I guess he wasn't expecting somebody to be in the truck with him that day. I didn't know how he what he had set up his phone set up. You know, he, when as he was talking to the phone, the phone talked back to him. But when the phone talked back to him, it said, "Good morning, sexy." <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, okay, you know, I'm like, sitting over there, don't go, you know. I just kind of look over at him like that, and he was like. <laughs> we looked at him, we looked at each other for a minute, we just both bust out laughing. You know, as far as the conversation went, I didn't engage him anymore. I didn't really want to know what was going on with him and his phone. But you know what I'm getting at there is the thing is, you can change your name, you can change your clothes, your hair, or maybe even your spouse. But God will always call you by your real name Amen. and who you are. God will engage us where we are, not where we want to be, not where we were. God will engage us where we're at. The Holy Spirit is not a new creation. It's not a Johnny come lately. You know, somehow we think the Holy Spirit only comes to us in the New Testament. The Holy Spirit has been there since the very beginning. Somehow we just like, you know what, oh God, you know, yeah, all right, yeah, God needed some help here, so yeah, he created him. And, no, he's been there ever since the beginning. In the book of Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, God says, let us make man in our image. Amen. Now God the Father was talking to, to the other two parts of the Holy Trinity, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. You know, God didn't have a mouse in his pocket. He wasn't talking, he says, let us. The Holy Spirit was with us from the very beginning. In the book of Genesis, chapter 1, the first two verses, first two verses, God says, his, uh, it says his spirit was hovering over the waters. Talking about God's spirit now. Now let's be clear, God has one spirit. He doesn't have multiple spirits. He has one spirit, the Holy Spirit. But there's something interesting in the wording, in, in, the, in the context, in the first two verses. Now we know it says God's spirit was hovering over the waters. Now, let's look at the word hovering just for a minute. Um, something I noticed about the word hovering. If you go to the Hebrew and you look up the word hovering, it has overtones of referring to a dove. I don't believe that to be an accident. We know that a dove symbolizes the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit has been there since the very beginning. It, it, it has been there. It is nothing new. It's not a Johnny come lately. The Holy Spirit has been there. So God knew that it was an important role. The, 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 uh, when you see one, you see the other. It's an important role. The Holy Spirit has roles in our life. That is why it is so important that a, 
a, a Christian, allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you and to speak into your life. I'm going to buzz through a couple of these real quick. I don't want to spend a lot of time on it. But one of the roles is, uh, is, to, is to teach us. In chapter 14, right where we're at, you can jump down if you wanted to in verse 26. I'm not going to read it. But it says, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things. So if, if you want understanding and how to, how to learn Scripture and, and a lot of other things, the Holy Spirit will teach us. And the counsel. In, in, in John chapter 14, verse 20, it says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you, not as the world does, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. In the guide, I say I'm going to buzz through these quickly. And, uh, God, the Holy Spirit guides us in John, book of John chapter 16, verse 13. It says, however, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you things to come. Now, see, what I find interesting is the first three things that I mentioned here, God can use other people to do those things in your life. Now, the fourth thing that I'm getting ready to mention, the last thing is, this is something only God can do. In the book of John, chapter 16, verse 8, it says, when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Convicted. When you have a conviction about something, that is what God does. It is not our job to convict anybody and lay, lay, lay a guilt trip on anybody. But I've had that done as well. Before I got saved, you know what? All I got told about was what a dirty, rotten sinner I was. Well, I already knew that. I already knew that. You know what? It is not someone else's job to lay a conviction on me, to lay a guilt trip on me. That is something that God does. Somewhere along the line, these people have gotten it wrong somewhere along the line. I don't know. Maybe they meant well. As I say, God can use people for the first three, but when it comes to conviction, let's leave that up to God. That's God's job. God does a much better job at it than we do anyway. Now, I'm going to Hopefully you can see this board up here. I don't know. It, the light up here reflects on it. Now we know God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Now I've got arrows working with each other because they know that we know that they work in perfect harmony. <laughs> perfect harmony. There, there's no bickering at all. You know what? Everything that the Holy Spirit does points back to Jesus. It keeps pointing back to Jesus. The Holy Spirit doesn't say, look at me. Look at me. You know what? Uh, the Holy Spirit works much different than that. You know what? When, it, when Jesus, uh, the Holy Spirit, let me do it from this side. I'm not left-handed, so I don't know how this is going to work. The Holy Spirit, everything that it does, it points to Jesus saying, look at him. Be preoccupied with him. Look at him. Look at him. Don't look at me. You know what? Look at him. Be preoccupied. I don't know how my lines are doing. Anyway, <laughs> I'm making a mess, I think. But, uh, but everything that he does is saying, look at him. He doesn't say, look at me. What the world is, if you see on TV or anywhere else, what does the world do? Look at me. What does it say? What about me? What about I? What's that song say? What about number one? Yeah. That's not what the Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit deflects everything and says, look to him. Look to the Son. Look to Jesus. And they work in perfect harmony. Look to the Father. It just, it's a continual cycle. They work in perfect harmony. That is how it's supposed to function with a Christian. You know, when we, when we have the Holy Spirit, we don't worry about all this other stuff. We don't matter. It doesn't matter who gets the credit as long as God gets the glory, right? Mm -hmm. That's all that matters. Yeah. Yeah. When you get filled with the Holy Spirit, you're going to know. In the book of John, chapter 14, that we just read from, this was Jesus' last discourse with his disciples. This is the last time he was really going to talk to them in the flesh. He was telling them he must leave. But he would not leave them alone. I believe God is trying to do something bigger than you right now. But the problem is not is residing with us at many times. For something that needs to change. The thing is, you must allow God to move into your life. You know what? God is trying to do something much bigger than you. Thank God for that. Mm -hmm. To have a faith that's real, it's going to be tested. To have a faith that's real, you're going to need the Holy Spirit to, to uh, be real to you. If it's just something kind of distant, like that weird cousin, 
It's never really going to work out for you. You're going to have some type of limited presence. It's, you're never really going to step out and become who God wanted you to be. You know what? I still don't know who God all wants me to be yet. And that's something I probably won't fully realize at the end of my days, whenever that may be. You say, well, I think I've got it all figured out. I think I'm, all, I'm going to be whoever I, I, I am right now. I would hate to think this is the end of it. You know what? God has got so much more planned for you. You say, well, I don't know what could he, could he have planned for me. It's hard to tell. If you would allow God to speak, really speak into your life and allow him to really get a hold of you, that's a faith that's real. Not a faith that's all about religion. Not a faith where, you know what, i got to have a good image. I need to make sure I go to church on Sunday so everybody thinks that I'm a good person. Why are you worried about what people think about you? It doesn't matter what they think about you. And you, you don't even want to know what they think about you. You don't even want to know. God is trying to do so much more. He is so much bigger than anything of, of such things. They work in perfect harmony. I ask you, does your life feel like right now that it's working in perfect harmony? Mine certainly doesn't. You know what? I, I need a little bit less of me in this life and more of God. I don't know where you're at with that. But it needs to be a little bit less of us, a little bit more of Him. You know, what, what would a church look like that was actually sold out to God? What would a church look like that would actually allow the Holy Spirit to have its way? That would be a dynamic church. And there probably ain't money around, to be honest with you. To really allow God to work in our lives. That would be something totally different. You know, there's times in my life, in my Christian world, that I have felt so close to God. But there's other times I felt so distant from Him. didn't change whether I was saved or not. That didn't change at all. But it, I just felt so distant from Him. But there's other times I just felt so close. What changed? It wasn't God. It was me. And there were some things I needed to change in my life. My faith didn't seem real to me because I was going through something. There was something maybe that was overwhelming me at the time. There was something that I was struggling with. And I felt so distant from God. God that's, it, it wasn't God's idea to create that distance. We did that all by ourselves. With every head bowed and every eye closed. Maybe you're at a place in your life, you know you're born again, but you also feel distant from God. You know, I don't know what caused that, and you don't have to tell me anything, but you do need to talk to God about it. Because God already knows anyhow. There's something that 